Alright, welcome back to the High Command. Haven't really thought of a cool name for this. I was going to call it like Murphy's Law and Murphy's Table because Murphy's Law bad luck happens to me and it's a Murphy Table. It was going to be a gimmicky thing, but until I come up with that, here's the High Command Table. We're going to start Phase 1, Turn 1. According to the patrol scenario, the person with the higher force morale goes first. That would be the Germans. I'd say defending Germans, but there's really no defender here. So the first thing I'm going to do is roll my five dice, and what do we got here? So I have a one. Let's line them up here. Okay, so first things first, I roll two fives. So what I'm going to do is take one of my chain of command dice. I'm going to set it aside. It's now going to be on the two. So I'm close to earning me a chain of command die. My four means I could activate a senior leader. However, I'm going to keep my senior leader off the table because he's got to organize troops coming onto the board. So I'm going to ignore that die. One thing you can do with your dice rolls is you can combine them into a higher dice. Uh, so like if you had two ones, you could combine them to make a two. So instead of moving two separate teams, you can actually move your entire section, which is actually a really good tip for the Russians because as they start to come on, they don't have any teams. They have like one team, their mortar team. Uh, so if and they of roll, course, he didn't say this to me before now. Well, it hasn't your turn yet. Um, but as it stands, the Germans have teams and squads. So I'm actually going to bring on first team. We'll bring the mortar team. I'd like for you to put the mortar team at the far point. So I'm deploying the mortar team at the far point. Uh, according to the the force list, they don't have any smoke. It's all HE. So they've got a mortar there. They can face the outside. Cause yeah, they can face good. anywhere. Well, yeah, just face them that way. Because <laughs> she says they're going to phase <laughs> off the table. She said they're, they're not the brightest mortar team, so they're facing off the table. Well, yeah, we'll just go with that. Okay, so that's my one. Oh, and I didn't roll any sixes, so she's going to go immediately after this. I got my two here, so I'm going to bring on one of the sections. Now, I could have taken the one and the two and combined that to make a uh, junior leader, but since the junior leaders can't use any of their uh, special actions on the turn they come in, I'm just going to go ahead and activate the entire squad and deploy one whole squad and bring their junior officer onto the table. <sighs> grab it, grab it. Go ahead and line them along. Line them along that back wall. Pretty please. Okay, so I gave her a tough task because the way the game is set up is you don't move them as like just a clump of people all together. This, since this is like a one-to-one -one type of person game, you can't shoot through the other members of your squad. So if you're going to make like a fire team along a wall, they all need to be spaced out. That way they can all shoot one, you know, alongside each other. So on my deployment of the Germans here, let me swing around so you can see the opposite side of the table for a moment. So we're going to place them. I don't think they got <laughs> You know, he kind of fell down dead. That's okay. <laughs> she doesn't care if they fall down dead. Uh, okay, so what she did was she put them here. I mean, which is fine for an initial deployment. Um, the guy with the Panzerfaust, he's the squad leader. So he's just there. And the machine gun team is here. So when I activate the whole section, all of them can move. Or if I need to, I could use him to... Um, well, actually, since there already could be a separate team, I could give an order just to the machine guns. Here we go. Since the fire team for the machine gun includes one rifleman, we'll just do it like that. I individually based everything simply because when I want to take casualties, I just got to take one figure. I don't have to keep track of uh, casualties on the base. So that's what the German deployment looks like from that side. Now we're going to check the Russians. So I'm going to run back over to the other side. Oh, she's going to bring the dice over here. So this would be phase two of turn one. Uh, so the Russian player, let's line them up. So I can make this a 
six. No, you okay. can't. This is six. You can only combine up to a four because your fives represent your chain of command dice and your six represents. Oh, who gets the next phase? So you can't add them for that. Um, but you could take these twos and activate a senior commander, but you don't want to do that because you don't want to bring him on yet. The three, okay, so this is actually really, really good for the Russian player. The fours really don't do any good for her because she wants to save her senior leader uh, because if you bring the senior leader on now, because he's supposed to be in the back marshalling the troops forward, it would be more difficult for her to bring troops on in a later phase. The three means you could activate uh, essentially these three dice right here means you could go ahead and bring on three squads which is great because you have three squads so you know what you could do she could bring all three squads on now when you bring folks on you can bring them on depending on their uh, skill level you can bring them on within I have to look in the book but because you're regulars I think it's like within six inches of your drop-off point. But since we kind of put our drop-off points in cover, it's not too bad for them to start kind of semi in cover. Here's where she's deploying squad one. Now, because you can do these dice in any order you want, she technically could bring on all three squads, have them on the board, and then she could bring on her senior officer because he's coming on last. That would only leave her mortar team deployed off of the table. So in a later roll, if she rolled a one specifically, she could then try to bring that guy on. Just waiting for her to deploy. Uh, she could then bring him on later, but if she tried, she has to roll a four, five, or six for him to actually deploy to the table. So she really isn't too bad off this way by bringing those squads on now. That actually gives her a lot of... Uh, options compared to the Germans right now. Okay, was that all? Squad. I think she's got one more squad. Now what I have done is on the back of the bases I marked put like a blue dot for first squad, two blue dots for second squad. Just to kind of help keep things together. I'm not sure how chaotic it will become later on if that's important or not. Um, I haven't read anywhere in the rules where it says you need to mark your bases to keep track of your squads. So it might not, that might be a mute point. Because when you have like a leader, if he uses initiative, he can control any squad within four inches of him anyway. So it might not matter if you have them marked. Okay, is that your three Soviets? Okay, I'm going to hop over here so you can see where she's deployed. Okay, so I came over here. And now she's got two squads, and she brought the senior leader on, which is this guy over here. And um, it, now she can start using her command initiatives when she rolls. <sighs> Boy. Oh, and then she's got one squad with everything right here. <laughs> We're going to have to make our little entrenchments and stuff bigger to accommodate squads, not one or two people. All right, so that's kind of how we're at. The, I have one German squad hidden down there and the Russian player there. Uh, because she rolled no sixes, it will actually be the German's turn to roll dice. So let's throw them out here on the table. Find a nice open area. Awesome. Well, I rolled one six. So it's going to go back to the Russians as soon as I'm done. Two fours for my senior leader, uh, two threes. So what I could do, I could activate my junior officer who is hidden over behind that uh, barrier you can barely see, or I could bring on two more squads. At this point, because we're just feeling each other out, we don't really have any kind of coherent plans, I'm going to go ahead and bring on another squad. That might not be too bad. So I'm going to spend one of my threes to bring on my junior leader and his section. Alright, so here first Germans have deployed back behind that there barrier. 
you know, since we haven't really figured out exactly where we're going to be, it's really hard to say if that's a good, wise choice. <laughs> so we'll see. That might not be the cover I want because she's more on this side. She's not on the building like I thought she would be. All right, so now that's the end of that phase. So she's going to roll. All right, perfect. This might work out good. She's got a five. Okay, so she has one six. So that means this is going to go right back to me. Five. So she gets her first command die point. Excellent. She has a four, which means she can activate the senior leader. Senior leader gets four actions within a nine inch radius from him. Uh, so he could issue individual orders to those squads. Or there's some... Uh, things they can do that free actions, if you will, like activate folks to fire, you know, throw grenades or smoke, and or he could. Uh, she doesn't have any anti-tank stuff, but if you had like anti-tank guns, he could designate them to fire on targets that were not vehicles. So there's actually a lot of options, which we'll probably discuss off camera, so she has an idea what she can do. Uh, so that's the senior leader, and she's got two ones, so she could make fire teams, or she could combine her two ones and activate a squad and either move a squad forward or she could try to bring her mortar on and then roll a die six to see if he actually deploys. Okay. okay. I'll do that one. Okay, so she's going to take a die six that we have. Well, she's going to take one of her die sixes. She's going to roll it. Four, five, and six, he comes on. Five, she's lucky. So, where would you like to deploy? Just right here? Yeah. Okay. So she's got a mortar facing out. There's the mortar team. Oh. Just in case you can't see it. Right there. Near the deployment zone. Alright. That's her phase. And then I can... Can I still use my leader die? You can still activate your senior leader over there. Yeah. Okay. And what can he do? All right, so I'm going to take this moment to just explain to her off camera what all they can do. I just do. want to know if he can, how far they can move. Yeah, we'll take a moment to discuss movement and stuff like that and then share that with you guys. So one moment, we'll be back. Okay, so I took a moment just to briefly describe uh, movement. Essentially, she can activate a squad with her senior commander, and uh, if she moves tactically... She can move one die six inches, and then they'll stop in a tactical uh, kind of stance. Or she can do a normal movement of two die six inches, and then she can't fire at the end of that. Or she can move one die six and fire, but then you get a penalty for shooting. Or she can run at three die six inches, but then she can't shoot, and then she takes one point of stress on that squad. So now she's going to start moving out the Russians. I am going to use my commander thingy okay and activate all of those around the farmhouse and they're going to do a normal movement all right so you're gonna move you gotta move one squad first for nine inches now what you can do because those come with leaders the leaders can move for free with a group and then at the end of that free movement, they can use their activations to, say, activate someone they moved within range of. They could even move away from a squad, use one of their activations, and move off if they wanted. Now that senior leader, because he's within four inches of somebody, he can move with one of those advancing squads. So you could say he's like moving forward with that group. All right, that's fine. Does so, he lose the ability to tell them to move too? Nope, he still gets his... Because you... You activated them first, you can go ahead and move them. Okay, do I have to roll again? Yes, now you gotta roll two dice six for that group. And the reason why we're rolling to see how far they move is because, you know, you know how far you want them to go, but the men might be hesitant or the tactical situation, there might be smoke on the field, they can't quite see exactly where they're going, but they have their own reasons for not moving at the full potentially six inches they could go. Or 12 inches on a two die six, so she's moving the whole squad forward. I, 
Oh, you missed one. He's right behind the barn. He's hiding. Now, Coward. Coward. Get up there. So this is the hard part because we really don't quite know. Like, we have an idea where we are. The fact that we don't really see the enemy with our peoples yet. You know, it's hard to say, well, they have to move in a straight line. Right now, they're just running in groups up to secure the building, it looks like. Now, they can get in the building. There's rules for moving within a building, shooting from a building. And so that is not such a bad idea to try and secure that building. All right, so that was the Russians. Now we got to take a German phase. So we still have not had a turn. This is still all turn one. Whoop. So I have... So my chain of command dice goes up by one because of the five. I could then do my senior commander. Um, I, oh, oof, I still have one squad left to bring onto the board. So what I'm going to do, okay, this isn't so bad. I'm going to use my two ones here to bring on my last squad. And one, two, three. Let's see here. How far from a deployment? I just want to take a quick peek and see how far from a deployment I can go. All right, I had to measure out on the board. So that was approximately six inches after I checked the book. Elites can deploy up to nine inches any direction, even towards the enemy. Uh, so the question that was brought up was she said, well, wait, you said it had to be undercover. When you put down your deployment spots, that has to be within cover, but your people can deploy away from that anywhere within that uh, six inches for regular troops so she may have changed her deployment had she known but he yeah. always knows these things on his turn <laughs> yeah. well you know okay so I wouldn't call it cheating it's just more of a tactical knowledge I read the book all right so that's that's the German deployment so now we're back to a, a Russian deployment and we still believe it or not still turn one Excellent. So we still have a change of phase because it's one die six, so it comes back to the Germans. She could do her high command officer. Okay, so having this many fours doesn't do her a whole lot of good because she's going to activate that senior officer once. Uh, they do have some lists, do have the option where you could buy more senior officers, uh, but we don't have any more than just the one. And then she can activate one squad. My squad is going to move from this deployment point. Okay, just a standard move. Six inches. That is almost just the behind the cover. Close. Pretty close. And now since we really can physically see where the enemies are deployed this might be where we would start to think about putting them out in a line uh, so right now she's doing kind of too deep so her now, front row of three can shoot they can't shoot between mm -mm. no if you shoot if there's someone with an a two inches of either side of your line of fire you can't shoot because that's like a friendly danger zone so yeah when you first deploy it does kind of look like a, a cluster because you're not quite sure exactly how to fan out or move um, but then as you start to see where the enemy is and where they're moving then you need to start thinking about what kind of line do I want to make so right now she knows I have people that way the problem is when we have that barrier kind of going across across the board it does no good cover from the people coming this way where one of her you know deployment zones is um, so I'm gonna have to move them otherwise if they get shot at they're kinda in the open unless I make them adopt a tactical stance so I'll need to move them and then I have those guys in the open but currently there's no one that can shoot at them and then there are opponents here on the other side of the building so it's a race to see who can get to the building alright so you have your first squad moved so you can put a dice they activated 
And I can't do anything with my fours? Your four, the senior office oh, is of him. Well, actually, yeah. he gets a nine inch command radius. So, and he's got okay. four orders. So, you could give an order to each squad to activate. Okay. The squad over there is going to go normal movement. All right. And they get to move nine inches. So, what does it take to enter a building? Uh, to enter the building. That's nine inches. <laughs> okay, so nine inches will put you right at. No, it the puts me inside the building. It takes a certain amount to move in. Let's see. But it puts me inside. Well, I won't get you inside this turn because it takes a certain amount to move into the building. I'm gonna find out exactly. See, it's always checking the rules for me. Well, yeah, I would check it for me too, because I gotta move you into the building. They have a whole section on buildings. Units entering or leaving the buildings must do so via a doorway. Well, the whole back side of that's gone, so there's a door. Um, there's a door. Oh, using normal movement, oh, which you did, you can't do tactical or at the double, but with the lower dice roll being discarded if the door is reached. Oh, so you can reach it, you just can't enter it yet. You don't have enough to enter. Um, it says because it takes a certain amount to get everybody in there. Oh, but it does say if it's a building with a large enough opening, you could disregard that. So if you're nine that's inches, a building with a large enough. Yeah, that's opening. a large enough opening because the whole backside is tore open. So your guys okay. climb over the rubble. Uh, I'm moving just my commander inside the building, just because okay. it's easier to try and reach one little dude. Okay. So All my right. whole unit's in there. All right, so that's fine. So she's told me. One guy will represent the whole squad in there. So she got one in. They're all back behind. They're really close to it. So I can so pull them kind of... off if I need to. But All right. <laughs> there you go. So if she takes casualties, she can pull them off. So she's taking the... Uh, are you taking like the middle one or the far back one? She's on the bottom floor of the very far building. So now they got rules for shooting in and out of buildings. So basically within a 90 degree arc coming out that window, you can engage targets and you can be engaged in return. So I'll have to look and see if that squad in the open is within the 90 degree arc. Basically, I have to get them into the building fast. Okay, I'm gonna move my other unit first. They can move seven. And they're gonna go they're in. They're gonna go in the building as well. All right. So also my Oops. junior officer is going in there. All right, so she put the junior leader in. Somewhere. There's a floor in here. I know it. I right. put one there. Okay. All right. Now, when you first go in, they're all assumed to be on the ground floor. You actually have to use movement to change they're floors. They're on the ground floor. They're on the ground floor. And, my and she's leaving those. Stay behind the building, yelling. Okay. So senior commander's so outside he's... on the rubble. Yeah, on the rubble. On the because he's got to be within the four Whoa. inches. Okay. She's yelling at him. Alright, that's it. Now I gotta roll my five. I don't even know what phase this is. And we still are in the same turn. So the phase will change back to her. I get two more points on my chain of command. I'm up to five. Woohoo! Three means I could activate a junior leader. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that squad that's in the open. And what we're going to do is we're going to run at three die six because we want to charge the building as well. So I am going to take a point of shock. But because my junior officer is active, what he will do for his second action is, uh, well, actually, I think they get to drop. I don't know they if can't go in a building if they're running. Oh, that's right. They can't go in it if has they're running. To be normal. And because I'm going through the front, I have to go through a door, which means I'll probably make it to the building. I probably won't get inside the building. All right. So with that in mind, yeah, we can't run. So I don't have to worry about the shock point. So I'm going to roll two dice. I'm going to roll these two. Eight inches. I'm going to come in 
Where's your dudes in the window? Are they in, they're in these two yeah. buildings? I'm going to come up here so you can't shoot at them. So take. Oh, yeah, that's well within eight inches. Yeah, you can get to the door. Okay, so I'm going to move them up. That's when you want to drop mortar fire. Okay, so you can't see what I did there because I had the camera down. But essentially, let me move you over here, action cam. I just moved them up onto the sidewalk. And they're going to try entering that door on their next phase. And the way that the uh, Russians are deployed in the building is some are in the far building, some are in that yellowish mustard building. So nobody's within 90 degrees of each other. They can't shoot in or out. But they saw you run into the building. Yeah. I guess they might have seen us running. It's now the Russians phase. Dang it. So. We are never getting out of this first turn. <laughs> I know this first turn is going on forever. I wanted to film this thing like one turn at a time, but uh, it's going to go forever. Okay, so the phase will go back to me. Senior officer, junior officer, or and two squads. Okay, now I need to know what all my senior officer can do. All right, so we'll take a quick peek, and I'll tell you some of the things that these guys can do. Let's talk about that. Okay, let's see. So I'm going to use my four and activate my commander to do his radius thing. Which i got to make a correction. I said you get four actions with a senior leader. You only get four actions with the commanding senior leader, and we don't have one of those. So our regular senior leaders only get three activations. Of course, on my turn. <laughs> anyway, so he's going to do that. So my first squadron over there is going to get activated by him, and they're going to move and go into a defensive position. And they're just going to move from this far back building if I can get my fingers in there. I don't even know if I can move so they can see that very well. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, yeah. Wah. Into this building right here. I think that's the second floor. <laughs> you know the rubble was good but the rubble makes it hard to get in there. Okay maybe we do want to move up to 20 millimeter buildings just so we can get our fingers in there. Okay. There you go. So now they're all in the same building. So if you will, this section is actually, this building has got four sections. So she has moved everybody into the section two, and my Germans are about to enter section three. Okay. So that was my first squadron. So they've moved, and they're in a defensive position. Now my second section is going to go into Overwatch. Overwatch or the um, okay. I think it's Overwatch. Yeah, over so like. So if, somebody... if anybody tries to move in on them, they can shoot them, right? Yeah, we'll see. When it's in a building that's muddy, because that's weird. Fine, they're just gonna go into a defensive position too. Okay. I'm just saying, I don't uh -huh. think I remember yeah, reading yeah, in yeah, there yeah, 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 yeah. Overwatch yeah, inside yeah, yeah, of a yeah, building yeah. to people coming into the building. No, because we're going to come from the top. You can't come from the top. You have to start on the first floor. Dude, you can't see me on the you first floor in that part. Yeah, but give me a couple start. activations. I'm going to move up and then come over and do a death you from above. You can't come over. There's a wall in between the buildings. We're going to make a hole. Have you been watching them at Battleground Afghanistan? No. We're going to make holes. Okay. Anyway, so there's my four. All right. My three is a junior commander. Okay. What does he do? 
Right. Now your junior commander, basically he gets a six inch command radius and he gets two activations. So that would be him to do something so they can... So he can activate my team. He could activate your team as an action. Fabulous. Okay. So he's going to activate my mortar team. And my mortar team was told by this little dude over here that there's some dudes over here. So they're going to try and shoot him. All right. So, so from it's here. more than 18. From so there. So have a minimum. To there. So they're just effect. Well, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Remember, mortars don't have to worry about effective. It's if it's line of sight. Since that team is out of line of sight of the mortar. I know. I have to roll a five. Or five six. or six. So let me see how many shots they get. See, this is why you need to print out the little tables so you have all that info. Let me find that chart, the firing table. Blowing you up. So you gonna blow I me started up. Started it. All right. So you get oh two dice. It's a firepower of two. So a little tiny mortar popping, pop. One. Okay. So what I gotta do is I gotta see if they get hit. Now one of the things. It says reduce cover by one level unless target has overhead cover. They do not have overhead cover because you're not, they're not in cover. They were behind a wall and it's facing towards the building. So you can't really reduce it. So they're, they're in the open. So it's a miss. I got to roll, roll one die six and we're going to see how effective that one shot is. You rolled a five. According to this, it kills a model. All right, now before you do that, <laughs> but hold on there, lady. Okay, so first of all, yeah, it says you'll get to pick a model, but here's the thing. and You can't pick the officer. You have to roll a die six because I took one casualty. If you roll a one, you basically if you roll the number of kills or less, then it can be the junior leader. Since you killed one troop, it's a six, so it wasn't the leader, so you can just take so one of the people. Which one's the leader? I thought that's one was yep, the leader. Yep, that's the leader, so you can't so take I that. So I can blow up the one I wanted to blow up. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, he's dead. All right. So that's one soldier gone. Out of I made the first kill. I made the first kill. <laughs> first kill. Okay, so you did one activation on them. Right. And then I'm going to activate this squadron. Okay. To move. Now, see, here's the other thing you can do. Because that cover's right here. Those guys are in the open. They could shoot there. I only shoot 18. Well, you can shoot more than 18. Okay, I'll shoot. <sighs> okay, well, there you go. That's what I get for helping around. So, four? Or my loader doesn't count. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, we'd have to count him separate. So basically, the machine gun has a certain amount of firepower you'd roll. He'd have one that he can contribute. Actually, I don't think the loader gets to contribute because he's loading. But this guy and this guy, his firepower makes up for the fact that he can't. Well, why can't this guy? Oh, because he's behind the wall. So if you're looking. Not quite outside. Yeah, just barely. All right. So first of all, we're going to look at that light machine gun. They are using a belt-fed bipod light machine gun. That's eight die six. Sweet. Uh, hold on. Yeah. Eight die six. So you could roll for the machine gun, and then those dudes get two. Now, because... Two each or just two? Two total, two. Okay. So if you want, you could take... I'll take my six and the four since I already know what they're going to do. All right, wow. So she opens up with her machine gun. Now, the thing is, it would be among him, 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 and him. Because those are the ones in the way. Those guys are blocked or shielded by their bodies. I don't think he's shielded because I blew up the guy that was in front of him. The little dude on the ground is in front of him. But he's not. He's on the ground. They're all on the ground. 
They're all They're standing cowering. Up. The model is standing. Roll your dice. <laughs> oh, snap. Okay, okay, because, yeah, so let's see how effective that was, because my dudes are regulars. You have to roll, since it's at effective range, fives and sixes hit. All right, so there's four potential hits, so now we're going to roll and uh, roll those four because we're going to see how effective they were. But I hit! All right, now how effective did you hit? Oh, okay. Not too bad. The two ones and twos are misses, so take the two off. All right, the six is another dead. You just grab somebody. I take your missing gun off. <laughs> oh, you don't actually get to take the machine gunner. Oh. Because another guy will just take his spot. So put the machine gunner back and take a rifleman <laughs> off. Okay, you killed the machine gunner, but then another person picks up the machine gun. So you did good. You killed the machine gunner. Oh, you know what? I think they take shock when they take a casualty. No, they don't. That's what the chart's for. Anyway. Okay, so, oh, you got to see if it was the commander. So you did three hits, right? Okay, it wasn't the commander. And then those four, that shock. And look, I have a little tiny die we can use to signify shock or suppression on that unit. All right, cool. What else you got left for your Russians? Okay, he gets how many? Just two orders, right? Yeah. So, so actually, I think they're all done. activated them to fire and activated them to fire. So I'm all done. Whew. Goodness. And I only killed two. With all those sixes and fives, I only killed two. Not bad for me. I think you're changing the mood. All right, so, man, phase is going to go again. Oh, I get another point on the chain of command die. Six. I'm now up to six. All right. Um, the five, okay, I got two. Senior officer <gasps> and a squad. Okay, I can now bring my senior commander on because everybody's been deployed, been done, did deployed. Can you move him? He's going to go... Yeah, just behind that wall. <laughs> Not right here? Not no. in the open? Not in the open. Right. Yeah, we'll put him back there. He's in protection. And now i got to activate... i got to activate the squad. I can't activate the junior officer or the junior leader because I wanted them to drop a point of shock. So I can't do that. But instead, we're going to move that squad out of the open because they're totally open there. We're going to move them up towards the building. So I'm going to move them six inches towards the building. Yep, they're just going to go right around there. That's not very far. But it'll get them out of exposure to there. What, I have to do everything? Yes. You're the... You're the model mover person. I think. Give myself lots of targets. I know it's probably not the best thing, but. And take that with them. <clears throat> shock. Alright. I can't lose the shock. So, what I'm going to do. Though, with my chain of command dice, I should probably save this for a better time, but what we'll do is we'll go ahead and end our first turn. So that will be turn one. When we come back, we'll start turn two, and then the phases will be with the Russians. Alright, so here comes officially turn two finally. 
I, I had to use a command dice just to end it because I was like, oh my goodness, I want to see a turn change. Uh, it really doesn't matter because the things that happen at the end of a turn, we didn't have any smoke, nobody lost, uh, you know, there was really no reason to end the turn. We could have just kept going and I could have used that dice, but eh, it is what it is. So now we're turn two and here come the Russians first phase of turn two. Nice. So the one six means the phase will go right to me. Um, she can activate the senior officer, a section, and two teams. She has no team, so she would better off just combine that into a section. Uh, I do too have a team. Oh, she does have a team. Her little mortar team again. That's right. Right down here. Yeah. But first, I'm going to activate my commander in the building. Alright, go for it. And he's going to activate one of the squads or sections that's in that building. And they can see straight out of that window to this unit right here. Oh, lovely. So they're going to shoot them. Okay. Yeah, I didn't move them very well, did I? Okay. So you need... Alright, so it's your whole squad because they're at that window. Yep. It's seven people on the machine gun. The machine got eight dice. Yep. And then seven for the rifle people. So this is going to yep. be very, very bad mojo. No, it's going to be good. Good for her. Bad for me. Okay. So, is there rules for shooting out of cover besides the 90 degrees? Nope, just that night. If I'm within that 90 degree arc. You are. Okay, so my machine first. Now, wait, wait, wait. Is that within the, the 18 inches? Because oh, yeah. that will make a difference. Oh, yeah. Because she it's said. Like oh, eight inches. It's like 8 inches. So they are well within uh, close range for all that. Goodness. Four, That's fives awesome. Fives and sixes, right? Fours, fives, and sixes. So I have five from my machine gunner that potentially hit. Okay, roll them and I'll tell you what happens. So ones and twos are misses. Uh, fours are shock. And five's a kill. So that total shock is now four. And she took off a dude. All right. That was the machine gunner. And then seven. That was the machine gun? Only? That was just the machine gun. That was the eight dice. Oh, the oh boy, that's bad for that group. Okay. okay. So then there was seven guys. All right. Now, see, the only thing that we've done wrong here is because that's made of two teams, the, the um, shot needs to be split. So it should be two on the machine gun. And two. I on. killed the machine gunner, but somebody else took his spot. Right. So if I ever split, it actually makes a difference on how the shock is split, how the, the hits okay. are split. So roll your rifles. Now my rifle. Five and a six. Right, because you got to hit on four. Two potential hits. Okay, so her her rifles suck. Okay. Yes, one is a miss, a four is a shock. Now, because they're in the open, you decide if you want to put shock on the machine gun fire team or on the rifle team. I'll put it on the machine gun team. All right, so now shock is going to become important because when you have more shock than you have men, that group becomes pinned. So as a squad, how many people I got left in that squad? Six in your junior leader. Okay, so right now there are six people. He's attached to the squad, so he's going to go with them. Um, so they're not pinned right now, but they're really, really close to being pinned. If you kill a couple more people, they will be pinned because okay, there's more well shots. Okay, and I guess I'm going to have to do that with the other squad that's in the same building. The other section that's in the same building is going to shoot you. Okay, so here comes the seven dice. So here's the machine gunner. Oh boy, they just ran into a wall of bullets. That's... Crap. Awesome. Wait, wait, four, five, and six. Yeah, there was no fours. It was twos and threes. Oh, wait, I see a four and a five over there. 
Yeah, that rolled when I moved. Oh, out. okay. Trust me, I'm being <laughs> honest. So one lucky six. for me, she rolled one six. So now I roll one. four. It's a point of shock. So, so six. So they're really close to breaking and running away. Now that only matters because if they suffer more than double the people they have left and the turn ends, they route from the table. So that's one thing why ending a turn would be good for you, you know, if you could. But they're still safe right now because they got enough people. Okay, rifleman. Wait, wait, wait. You just rolled for rifleman. No, I rolled for the machine gunner in the second section. This is the rifleman in the second section. Oh, yeah, because they both have machine guns. Son <laughs> of a bonkers. Okay. That's a big building, apparently. <laughs> Son of a criminy. So I have... Yay, 15 millimeter. Four. Four potentials? Four potentials. Make one of these a one. Because one kills the... No, you got to see how many of the potentials actually either shock or kill. Oh. Which we forgot to roll. Okay. Yes, ones and twos do nothing. Fours are shock. So you split them. So basically one on each team. So four and four. Now, this is where... So my previous two hits, I should have rolled to see if I got the... Yeah, well, that's what we get for forgetting. <laughs> On my turn. It's always on my turn. Look, you just totally decimated that I squad. I did not decimate it. I didn't even kill anybody on this. You did. On this fire one. There's, I just suppressed them. There's a dead dude, I think. Don't be sad. All right. So I'm going to take just a quick moment to see when do we check. Okay. Uh, pinned. So sectioner's team will become pinned when their shock level exceeds the number of men and leaders remaining in the unit. Done. But, okay, they're pinned. Uh, okay. Halt. They will halt there at the point where they took fire. A pinned unit should be identified with a suitable marker to indicate its state. Pinned. Okay, she put a big red explosion die. <laughs> so they're pinned. <laughs> Uh, pen unit increases its level of cover by one. Oh, good. So they're hiding more. A pen unit may not use any of its section anti tank weapons, so on and so forth. They're not broken yet. Now, there's something about retreating. I thought there was how they got to move back. All right, well, let me roll for my my phase turn real quick. It's now, not your turn yet. What? What do you got left to do? That was just my senior commander. I still have my section and my unit, or my teams that I can move. Oh, that's true. That was just your senior officer or your senior leader yeah. who activated the two squads in the building. Yes. Mother... F <laughs> <laughs> so technically... You could spend a two, then have that squad do something. That's exactly what I'm going to do. That's I'm going to spend a one first. Okay. And have my mortar fire at them. And it's indirect fire. So it has it's only, to you don't have to measure with them ever. I know, I just like to Oh, she likes to measure. Like the, okay. like the, the tape measure. measure. Alrighty then. So they shoot two, and they have to get a five or a six. Nope. Oh, they missed. <laughs> Thank goodness. Okay. Then I'm going to activate my section. And it's going to be this section here that you can't see on the computer. Okay. Because it is. And you said I can, with the section, just do one thing? Yeah. And well, it's two if I activate the... If they move and shoot, it's move one die six, and then they shoot at half dice. Or move it two die six. You can move tactical... I'm gonna move and shoot. All right. So she rolled a two, so you can move two inches. So you gotta figure out how you wanna move them suckers around there. That obstacle. Two. Oh, oh. don't fall off the table. 
my machine gunner is loader his friend his buddy his buddy and his buddy that buddy You're gonna, my, my junior leader is going to kind of stay in the same spot, so he's within his four inches of all of it. Okay. Can he do that? Alright, what is it you're trying to do? So I know. My junior leader kind of stayed back. He didn't move. Well, no, he has to go with him. Otherwise, it's his own to stay behind. Okay. All right. Just on the edge of fire. Okay. So they're gonna fire. And that's at half dice? Half dice. So So if my machine four, gunner gets eight. Well yeah, it'd be four. So it'd be four. And then how many? He gets one and he gets one and those two don't get any because they're half. So yeah, half. just kinda of so, pull it up to half. Or five, six dice to shoot at your pinned dudes. What does the cover do? Now the cover, I'll tell you. Let me get to that table. I was trying to find the. Okay, so right now I'm suffering from the cannot find the chart that tells me what I need to know uh, when units break. I remember reading somewhere it talks about how far they're like forced to retreat. And I cannot find that, so... That's okay, I'm just going to kill them. Just kill them. That would make it easier if you just killed them. Then I wouldn't have to worry about if they retreat and how far. Uh, okay, so I'm looking for the national gun table here. So they're out of, out of range, so it's only five and sixes that count, right? Yes. So that would be three hits, because I have three five. Okay. Three potential hits. Now, there's three levels of cover. Open, light and hard um, so they in the open but because that when they got pinned they got one level of cover um, one twos and threes are a miss because they're considered to be in light so one twos and threes are a misses fours and fives are shock but that's after I hit the potential hits right oh yeah oh yeah no yeah so you still my potential roll hit Three and I oh, I thought that was your roll. I'm sorry, no. I thought the three, four. So yeah, your five. These are if that I hit part's them or not. the same. That's the same. Cover just to, will tell you how effective so, it was. One was a miss. One is a miss. Four. Four is one point of shock to either one. The team. Okay. And, and the six, six is a kill. Oh, it's shooting from here. So. All right. So we're at nine. How many? How many models are there? So we're not quite double. All right. So hopefully one of these okay. days. That's my phase. It's your phase turn. All right. I just wish I, I could find where it says how far they retreat. The only reason I want to know that is because it says pinned units can't move. But if they break, they run away. So let's okay. see. You can pause it and find your information. Okay. I'm going to pause it and find it for the folks at home. So you missed some of her dice rolling because I had it down at the wrong oh at her squad there. Alright, so we'll be right back after I find what I need. Okay, so I found it. It it's right where I was reading it on the broken units. When they broke in 14.6, it says immediately they fall back six inches plus two dice six inches away from the unit that caused them to break. So as long as they're moving away and not surrounded, they they fall back. So unfortunately, you can't move a pinned unit. So all I can do is try and rally and hold them out a little bit. But we are, we have not been getting friendly rolls for my team activations. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five. <sighs> Jeez. Okay, so the six is going to go immediately back to her. 
three fives. So yay, I get three points on my chain of command dice. That does nothing for me. And a one. I get to move a team. So I can't activate a, a junior leader or nothing. So that squad is sitting out in the open. And I got one squad sitting right outside the building. They're just too chicken to move. So let's have that mortar team fire. That mortar team is going to fire over here. That's line of sight. Two dice in the line of sight. Um, so they four actually... Five. Yep. I think it is four, five, or six. I like to have that chart. So apparently when you play, a good thing would be to print out the combat chart. Which we're pretty close to memorizing. I already told you. Four, I know. five, and six. You don't have to look it up. I like to look it up. But she's right. Two dice at four, five, and six. So here we go. I got one potential hit on it would be assigned to any of them. Right, let's see what happens. Because it's in the open. A four. It's one point of shock. So put a little shock. Yeah. Since they are all the squad. Doesn't really matter who you put it on because they don't have individual teams. And that's it for the Germans. We're just not getting friendly dice. All right, Russian team. All right. So what happened when you rolled? I rolled four sixes, a four, and a two. All right. So I think that ends the turn. I know. Finally, we're at that point. Okay. So let's line them up here. Now, when you end the turn, there's quite a few things that happen. I don't uh, want to end the turn until after I'm done doing my other stuff. Well, no, I'm just saying. You get to finish <laughs> your phase, but I'm just saying. Some things that will happen at the end of the turn, like smoke would clear. Really, the only thing that I have to worry about would be my breaking unit, but they haven't hit double yet to run. They have a chance to rally still. Uh, but, yeah, she gets a senior officer, so she can try and blow away that squad. But, yeah, four dice. The turn is going to end. Um, she'll retain the first phase on the next turn, and we're going to have a random event happen. So that was not staged. She really did roll that. So let's go for it. Okay, so first thing, the commander in the building. Commander in the building over here <laughs> with the two squads in the building. Is activated, and he will activate a section, and they will shoot at the little guys in the open. Right. Because apparently there's two machine guns and 14 riflemen. Well, just one section right now is being activated. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> potentially. Um, we have a problem. Okay, what's the problem? I have to take one of these away. Oh, so for <laughs> those who are good at math, she rolled an extra. So... <laughs> There won't be a random event, but the turn does end. <laughs> okay. She only gets, she only gets I only five that command dice. I didn't have enough dice for my machine. Right, I didn't even notice that. Look, I was like, man, that's the coolest roll ever because you rolled extra dice. All right. Okay. That's the so, Murphy table. My machine gun. Okay, eight. They're oh yeah, they're they're still. Regular troops, so f what was it? Four, five, and six. Four, five, and six on regular troops, huh? Yeah. He, of course, has to check me again. Yeah, I just don't like that. Oh, because they were close range. Yes. That's right. That's right. Close range on regular troops. So you had how many hits? Four. Four potentials. But because they're pinned, they're in the next light cover open. So one, twos, threes are misses. Four, fives are shock. And a six is a kill. So, one, two, three is a miss, and one point of shock. Okay, it's now at ten. How many? I had six people. Yep. So they haven't broken yet. Riflemen. Seven riflemen. Ooh, frappy. Wow. None? None. Yay! Okay. Kay. Section two. Section two machine, machine gun. gun opens up. Five 
fives and six. All right. Okay, so one, two, threes are misses. Four, two five misses. is a shock. A shock. She apply it to the machine gun crew. The six is a kill. Oh, you got to roll. How many? How many? Oh, it was one kill die. So you got to roll one. All right, it was not the leader. So actually, though, but how many dead people do I got, and how much? Um, you only have five people left, and you have. 11. 11 shocks. So, so they immediately, immediately break, break and run away. So six inches backwards plus but two dice six. I didn't get to finish my rifle. Immediately. You just did. That was the rifle oh, yeah, for that I'll section. Rifle. So, oops. I thought that was, yeah, the machine gun. Right. Yeah. Okay. So they move um, 14 inches back. Where'd our measuring stick go? This might have just saved their life. Not really because they're still in the open. Uh, moving back yeah, behind directly behind just away from, from so moving back behind the building if they can move them, run them backwards back there yeah they're done what yep Chicken. so I have to spend a bazillion but they break so you they break between the squad and the no no broken just means they as a group have run away because they stayed together but here's the thing um oh okay so this is why it's bad because at the end of the phase when the turn ends they will not have had a chance to try and rally off some of that so they'll be taken from from the table okay because here because you rolled the end turn right um if if the phase kept going, I'd have a chance to burn off some of that morale. But because it's ending on your phase, they're going to be disbanded from the table. You you really broke them good. Okay, so right. I still have my unit, right? Because you took one of my dice. Yeah, I did. I took you two. I took you two. I took you two. So I still have my squad. Yeah. And they're going to do... Which is the squad here. The squad right here. All right, what are they going to do? They're going to do a normal move. Okay. This time. So they get to move 11 inches. Right? Yep. Alright. So they're going to move 11 inches. I'm just sitting here thinking, what am I going to do? Like, why Why am I so far behind the power curve? And just thinking about it, the the chain of command dice just have not been very favorable to me. I have not really been able to activate a whole lot of sections and teams at once. So, we'll see how it goes. And now, it is the end of the turn. Okay. So, end of the turn. Turn in. There's actually several things that will happen. We'll just take a quick peek here. I'll tell you what happens. I know one of them would be if we had smoke, which we don't. Um, let me see. I know people are going to be watching this and they're like, why is there so much dead air? Because, good folks, we're looking stuff up. Okay, so on page 26 of the uh, tablet, it has all the things that happen when a turn ends. All smoke other than that from a fire is removed. We have none. All tactical and overwatch markers are removed, which you kind of had some, and they stay that way until the turn ends or you take them off. So anyway, they're off. Okay. Um, any jump off points which have been captured or removed? We haven't had that. Any mortar barrages will now cease. We have no mortar barrage. Any pinned units will check their level of shock to see if they remain pinned. Well, not only that, not only are they pinned, but it says any unrallied broken unit and leader will route from the table, which is all of that squad that she's messing with way down there. So they're done. She's chopping them up. Oh, hey, don't be mean to them. I painted some of them. <laughs> they're fragile. They're not made of metal. 
Okay, so here comes the squad. Now, we had to do a force morale check roll because I lost a section. It was more than just a team. I lost the entire section. <sighs> yeah, test force morale for any routed leaders. Well, here we go. I got to find that chart. Yeah, it's not a chart intensive game. However, the couple of charts that I would like to have handy are all in the tablet here because I don't have those memorized yet, like force morale effects. So luckily I did start with um, 11. Okay, so I had junior leader routes from the table. Okay, roll, I'm going to roll a die six and that will give me how much force morale I lose here. So I rolled a six. Oh, which is great because the higher the roll, the more you lose. So I lose junior leader routes from table minus two points. So I'm going to take my 11. I move it to nine. Then I had a section breaks. I'm going to roll that. So they weren't quite wiped out, but a four. <sighs> section breaks. One, two, three. Oh, minus two points. So I'm right now at seven. Seven force morale left. Okay. Ta-da. So whose turn is it? Because I rolled three sixes. You. You maintain into the next turn. <gasps> Yay. Right. So. Turn it in and I still get to go. Now, I'll tell you, in the book, they talk about that. They call that the mad round. Or, you know, you can even call it mad mint. Whatever you want to call it. The fact that you retain initiative from one phase to the next if you roll enough die sixes. Which, as you can see, totally, depending on your layout, is a big game changer. So, whew. She gets to go again. She gets to roll her five dice again. So really, if you kept rolling enough sixes, you could just keep going and going and going. Okay, so my wife, she just reminded me that that was the official end of a turn. So I'm going to stop it here, post that, and you'll be joining us up for turn three. And if the next turn goes like this, that'll probably be the last turn. So, all right, thanks guys for tuning in. Check back when we do turn three. Okay, so my last little bit of video got kind of corrupted. So I'm not quite sure exactly where that was, um, what all you saw. But we came in on the last turn. It was turn three, phase one. And I don't quite remember what the Russians did, but just in case you missed it. Oh, they shot there. But I know on my phase, yeah, they missed. Then on my phase, I got to move one inch and fire at half um, fire power and I did end up killing two Russians um, but that's pretty much it like, like we discussed earlier right now just at the lay of the land uh, the Germans are just tactically stuck I could throw smoke for that infantry squad back there but I can't throw smoke for two phases in a row I finally found the rules I find the rules I want after I need them but um, the smoke really isn't going to help them much from where they're at to get anywhere. They're pinned really good by the dudes on Overwatch looking out those windows. So they're going to go straight backwards. And then this group right here will eventually find a way to retreat home. So we're going to concede the table to the Russians today. They did really good. And my wife keeps saying how tactically minded she is. Well, how did we get there? Okay, well, wife, what what went good? I blew you up. There you go. She blew me up. Yeah. Machine guns. Well, how important was that deployment phase, the the patrol? Well, that sucked because I didn't know what I was doing, and I didn't know I had to deploy six inches away from my patrols. Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing either. That was our first time trying it, and. I thought by putting my deployment markers behind the cover like they recommended would be good, but the way that the cover is laid out sucked. 
So whoever set you this table up. set the board up. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah. Uh, this center building right there, I, I had a feeling whoever could get there first would probably control it. And the way that she got to deploy from the center-ish, the way she got to deploy from the center uh, gave her some good jump off points near the building. And I kind of deployed on, on that far side and had to move up. I just couldn't quite reach it in time. And then when I had to put those drop off points six inches back, you know, and then behind cover, what was kind of a, a tough spot. So it, it really did work out good for the Russians. Um, yeah, and because the way the, the building was set, they didn't have to go through the door because there was no doors. And the only reason why the Germans didn't push the attack is because one of their squads got pinned in the open and then you know they just couldn't move forward anymore at some point because they just took too much fire because there was two squads full-size strength squads inside that building and we just couldn't crack it and my dice rolls I blame some of that was just awful so um, yeah good good play on the Russian part um, just Thank you. yeah you're very welcome you earned it um, so I'm just curious Let's just kind of do a quick wrap up here. I'm just curious. What did you did you like this at all? Do you like this game at all? Okay. <laughs> she, to be honest, she doesn't like playing them at all. <laughs> she only plays them because I ask her to, and I got no one else. So, um, asking her what she likes is kind of like, yeah, she likes winning. I like winning. I don't like having to learn new rules because somebody gets bored with all the rules that I've bought him beforehand and now he has to get new ones and I have to learn them all again. Okay. So other than that, how'd it go? <laughs> I won. That's all that matters. So. Hi, ding! There you go. She won it. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap that up. Um, you know, we'll, we'll try and get some more terrain built. We have another piece of terrain coming that we're going to try for next time that, you know, whenever that happens, I'm pressuring her to, to get it finished. But it will not be at the time. center. It takes time. Well, whenever it gets out here, I know now not to put the big building in the very center of the table because that is the central point and it did become a big factor in determining who the victor was. Once the Russians got in there, I just could not move people up to it to get into it and the one group I did get up to it there's just no way they would have taken that group out well there you go small unit actions of a platoon uh, moving your squads it actually works out pretty good um, I enjoy the semi random nature of activations I mean it was really cool when I could earn a lot of uh, points on the chain of command dice but I can see right away that building that up is great but if you can't move your squads that really terrible and she rolled really good to move her squads on early because you can't move fire teams on unless they're discreet like specific scouts uh, panzer knacker type squads like that but she had to deploy full squads and when she rolled like three threes and her senior leader she just brought it all on the board at one time so that gave her a big advantage to start with as well. Um, so good, a good system. This guarantees that your no two games will ever, 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 ever be the same. So even though like the base game comes with six scenarios, we could play this same scenario over and over, change the terrain, and never have the same game. Uh, so really good. And as this was our first game, I know the next ones as we get used to looking up rules and remembering things, uh, they're just going to go smoother. So now that she's helped me learn it, um, you're going to see a lot more solo games because <laughs> I think she's done. Uh, so anyway, thanks a lot, guys, for tuning in. Um, hopefully you learned something along with us. Um, you know, if you want to see anything else related to the game, maybe break down specific rules, things of that nature, just let us know. And uh, there you go. That's it. Thanks a lot. See you all later. Bye.